Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for joining the Hashashila Ministry. As we continue on the Yahweh's Holy Day of the Week, Shabbat, in the understanding of the audience of Paul's letters, the epistles of Paul. This is part 16, sponsored by the House of Shield Ministries, presented by yours truly, Brother Andrew Bradley. And please bear with me as we go through this. I am, uh, got a nice little bug in my throat. So it's got me sounding a little funny, but we're going to push on anyway. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. We were in the last section, last lesson, I'm sorry, we were talking about the beginning of our understanding of the audience of the letter to the Philippians. And when we were discussing chapter 2, verse 10 through 11, we were talking about exposing one of the translation lies that the English church, the Western church, or Catholicism has put in. Because this started all the way back with Catholics, back in Rome. Where they put J.C. or Jesus Christ in that particular verse. But Paul was quoting a state uh, several verses from Isaiah 45, and that's what we were discussing. So we got up to the point where we proved that he was speaking of Yahuwah, all right, the Heavenly Father, not J.C. And that's the point we got to. So J.C. was inserted by the translators to put an idol, a name away from the true people of the book. One of the reasons the church did this is because at the time that the scriptures were being um, taken by the Western Church, by Rome, the people still had a presence. The original Hebrews had a presence. The name of the Father was part of the name of the people. Hmm. If you are trying to get a culture to, rep to grab a hold of scripture or a belief that attaches to a people you do not like. There's, you can't have them worshiping the Heavenly Father. Uh, 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 I don't know how worded the way they were. They would have not worshipped a God named after or named in similarity to a people they hated or thought poorly of. This dates back all the way to old. So they're not going to use the Hebraic name in reference to the Heavenly Father. They're not going to do it because if you do, you're going to say, oh, it sounds like the people in the Middle East. And at the time, they didn't call it that. It sounds in the Holy Lands, right? Mm. That's what they're going to say. <laughs> they couldn't do that. That's one of the reasons why they did that. It takes away from the people. Isaiah 45 said, Yahoo is the only Savior for Yahshua. So what is the real name that was used by Paul? He would have used Yahushua not J.C. Mm -hmm. And since he used Yahushua, we must understand that that did not create a contradiction with Isaiah. It agreed with Isaiah. Yahushua saved his people through the authority of his father. So we need to understand what that mean name really means. Okay? It does not cause a contradiction if you know the Hebraic understanding and definition of the Messiah's real name. All right? Mm -hmm. Does everybody follow? Yes. yes. Okay. So, that being said, I did all that talking and didn't even move the slides. I apologize. <laughs> I, I said all this already. <laughs> so, no need to stick right here. We can go to the next one. Mm. So, that being said, we can restate this verse, these two verses, that at the name of Yahuwah, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahushua Hamashiach is Adonai, for the glory of Elohim, the Father. Now, that sounds contradictory in a way, right? But remember, this is a Hebrew name. Right? This is a Hebrew name. So where does Yahushua come from? When you look at the Hebrew word up for name for Yahushua, it points to Joshua in English, or Yehoshua in the modern Hebrew. 
or Yahushua, Yahawashai, or it's on this couple of ways to pronounce it, but it really means Yahuwah is salvation or deliverance. So, like I said, there is no contradiction. Didn't the Messiah say, I come in my Father's name? Mm -hmm. So, there is no contradiction. Yahuwah saves his people through Yahusha according to his, the Father's, will, according to Torah. Now, we may say, oh, that's not true. You're twisting things up. You're using eschatology, as they like to call it. I'm using my old opinion. Now, we did quote scripture, right? But I can prove to you the translators knew the Messiah's real name, just didn't want to use it. Mm -hmm. I can prove it to you. Uh, before I do, though, is, is there anybody that would like to say anything to this point? Um, I think we're good. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother, brother. Can you read uh, everything under Philippians 2? <clears throat> All right. So everything from, you said, from Acts, you said on down? I didn't hear you. No, uh, right under Philippians 2. Oh, okay. Exposing the lie. Paul was quoting Isaiah. The translator knew the Messiah's name. Acts 7, 44 through 45. Our fathers had the uh, tabernacle witness in the wilderness, and he had appointed, speaking unto Moshe, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, oh. whom Elohim drave out before the faith of our fathers unto the days of David. Oh. Jesus brought Yasharel over to possess their inheritance unto the days of King David, Points of the wilderness. Who brought Yahshua over over to possess the inheritance? All right, thank you. This is what you'll find this in the KJV. If you look in the newer English translations, you will see Joshua instead. But since the KJV was translated in the 1600s, 1611, we know that the initial translators knew exactly what Jesus' name really was. Mm -hmm. It was pointing to a particular person in the Old Testament. It was pointing to Joshua. They know by using these two verses, we can prove that the translators knew that Jesus and Joshua had the same name. The name here is um, in the Greek, Iesuas, all right, Iesuas. And if you look at the Greek, Greek Septuagint, you see Joshua translated to the same name. The problem that the King James had is that they used Jesus for Jesus in the New Testament all throughout the Gospels. Mm -hmm. But when their name was pronounced here, Jesus, they could not use Joshua here or would cause a con inconsistency with the translation of the name. So they used Jesus because that's what they were translating it to in the New Testament in the first place. But we know the story, right? We know that this story is talking about Joshua in the wilderness, bringing them over to possess the inheritance of the Gentiles, or the possession of the Gentiles, or the other nations, right? That they were coming to possess it. It wasn't Jesus who brought it, it was Joshua. All right? So we can show by this verse, these two verses here, that Joshua, Joshua is the name. And you'll see that here. On the next slide. Brother, brother, continue to read here for me. <laughs> All right. Joshua 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. Now after the death of Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, it came to the to pass that Yahuwah spoke, spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moshe minister, Moshe's minister, saying, Moshe, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over, to, go over this Jordan, thou and, and, and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Yasharel. Joshua brought them over the Jordan. The early translator understood that 
the Messiah and Joshua shared the same name. Thus, if the argument is that Jesus is an English translation, wrong, Joshua is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Correct. Ain't that something, y'all? That's a hand slap right there. You know what? What they'll say, put that, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yes. Or what they'll say is, um, that, that. Uh, what does it say? Take these paws and reflect. Yes. Yes. Is that one part, brother? <laughs> Get these, uh, give me the in your soul and reflect. <laughs> That's right. That's it. That's it. And what does, um, um, what does uh, uh, Dr. Ekwede, uh, um, Rabbi um, Ekwede, you know, uh, Minister White, uh, the, the, the brother from Nigeria, the rabbi from Nigeria, mm -hmm. put it, he says, put it in your, put that in your spirit. That's yes. what I think he, he said. He says, <laughs> yes, he said, put that in your spirit and reflect. <laughs> 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 That's right. So mm -hmm. think about this. If the Gospels had Eosus in them, which was translated to Jesus, why did the translation continue to use Jesus? Just like I said, they knew Joshua was really the translation. And when they say, oh, well, you translate the name to English. No, I just proved to you that Joshua is the English translation. And the translators know this. But they don't want you to have a Hebraic name associated with it. Because Jesus is not Hebrew at all. It's 100% Greek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 100% Greek. It's the result of a transliteration by the Greeks. It's only Greek. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the Messiah. Because if the English church really wanted to do something right, with the, uh, with they would have used Joshua. You, Jesus should have never existed. I was like, how do you have the same It should have been Joshua. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, is there anybody want to add to this? Because I'm going to prove that Joshua is the Messiah's name mm -hmm. in English. No. Um, I would like to ask a question. You might be ahead in that direction. So I'm, I don't uh, want to be accused of being the lesson stepper. So I <laughs> no, brother, dark is way to say it, so you better be careful. I just want to ask. Dark has got a butt. Don't go oh, 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 oh. So we got a lesson stepper. A lesson <laughs> stepper. Right, let's see. I, I'm, mm, this is brother, go right ahead. just an inquiry. You say you're going to um, discuss the name Joshua. I, I want to know, are you going to... Um, are you going to... I'm trying to be careful the way I ask it so that I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Are you going am to get I into going the. to show you that Joshua. Yes. Uh, am I going to show you the, the Hebrew, the Strongs? Yes. Are you going to um, look at the Paleo or the Strongs um, roots and origin strong. of that name, the Hebraic aspect of it? I'm going to show the Strongs, the simple Strongs, not too deep, just the strong. Okay. I'll, I'll wait. And if if it's not if it's not answering my question, I will ask at that time. I think that'd be the best thing to do. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Thank all you. right. All right. All right. Well, let's let's move to the next slide and see if that does it. So, um, exposing the lies, right? The translators knew the name. The word Joshua in the Masoretic tongue, the Masoretic Hebrew is Yehoshua. Yehoshua, right? Or Yahusha, or Yaho, um, Yahawashai. It, it, we pronounce it in different ways. The Ye is a Mesoretic or modern Hebrew twist done by um, the Mesoretic Jewish people pronunciation. But it translates to Yahuwah is salvation, or Yahuwah saved. So by knowing the true Hebrew name of our Messiah, you eliminate the contradictions created by the list of translations. So we know that Yahushua really means Yahuwah is salvation. So even when Paul uses the, the Hebrew name of our Messiah, it references back to the Father only. This text also, since we read it in the last lesson, Isaiah 45, 
was specific to Israel only. Only to Israel. It said, Israel be saved, Jacob's seed, so on. It was very specific. It didn't speak to a world. So why would Paul quote a specific verse to a people that were not his or Hebrew? Can Paul change the audience of Scripture? Yeah. Does he have that authority? Yeah. Now, but now, if Paul was the Pope, he'll say it. That's what the Pope, church, the Church teaches. The, the Catholic Church believe they have the authority to change Scripture. They're above. They're on Earth, they are above the Messiah. The Pope is. Mm -hmm. He has the authority to do this, but we know that's ridiculous. We know Paul would not have done that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anybody want to add? Yeah, yeah. Mr. White? I, I, I want to say that I believe the name was changed to match the image of the picture of the Messiah that they've been showing to the world. Because how can you give a image of a European person with a Hebrew name, knowing that the Hebrew name comes from the Hebrew nations of the, of Israel, knowing the DNA of the people. It would have been a conflict. It's like giving my son the name Bobby or Sam. It doesn't exactly. fit. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to I'm gonna say he's, he's, he's from, let's just use a modern example, right? I got a, a, a young man from the Sudan, but his name is, um, you know, something crazy like Billy Bob Thornton. Right. <laughs> it's so true. Right. So they had to they had to use a Greek name to fit the Greek face. They gave the Greek Elohim the third circle, which is not ours. And, and thus the whole idol. Exactly. <laughs> In the Boy, they sold us a sandwich and a bag of chips. They didn't miss they didn't miss one part of the meal. <laughs> and the curtains are coming down, brother. They are. They're be, they're being exposed for what they have done. No more hiding. Mm -hmm. that is, no more hiding. <laughs> no, more hiding. no more hiding. <laughs> Minister White, did that? Did this answer, or 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 you, in fact, were not going to step? Or is this where you're leaving off at? On, you know, regarding... I'm going to move to the next verse. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, I was looking at the the Strong's the Strong. Wait. You, okay. You see where you have the Strong's number H three zero nine one. It's right by uh -huh. the three variations of enunciations. You see it H three zero nine one. It is it, mm -hmm. in what I'm looking at. Um, it says that this name that you see here on the screen is a derivative of something else. It comes from Yahuwah. So I just wanted to know if you're going to show that to prove that when Yahusha says he comes in his father's name, it shows that this name Yahusha actually comes from his father. It's a part of his father's name. The father's name um, Yahushua's name is, is, let me rephrase that. The father's name is in Yahushua's name with a, with a slight variation inside of it. So to change the name of the Messiah also changes the name of the father. Yes. Wow. Do, wow. do, you, do you see that? Yes, I because do. he said, I come in my father's name. Correct. So if the father's name is Yod Hey Wah Hey. <laughs> And then the son's name is Yod He Wa Shin He. Correct. The difference is just the Shin, which means that if you, if that means that Jesus can't Jesus can't come from Yahweh's. It name. cannot. So, so who is this other God that Jesus came from? Because it's not that one. So that means it's the Father's done. name has to change too. Exactly. So that's that's, that's what I wanted to highlight um, to prove your point that the name Jesus is not an English translation from his original name. 
There is no. There's oh, not Br- it's, it's not a translation from it at all. Oh, yeah, let's 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 see what Minister White is saying. I know we don't talk about modern Hebrew much. There but is just to show Come you on. his name is in Yah's name. Huh. You have the Yod. The Yod is the first character. You have the Hey, mm-hmm. and they call this the Ba or Wa. So mm-hmm. you have Yaha or Yahu. All right. Then you have. They call it Shua, Shai, yeah. or Sha in some language, in some pronunciation. That's the Shin, the Wav, and the Ain. Mm-hmm. All right? This is the part that's, that defines deliver, deliver, or save, or salvation. Mm-hmm. Yahuwah is salvation. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Yahuwah's name is part of Yahusha's name, and Yahusha is of the Father. Correct. Right. Correct. <laughs> So how do and you this get, is the, okay. the one on the right. The one on the right is Yahushua. The one on the left is Yahusha. Mm-hmm. Or Yahawasha. Or, 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 or Yahawasha. It's Greek. Right. And you see where it says the first one, this, this is Hebrew 3068, is Yahua. It's telling you Yahusha is from Yahua and from Yasha. Which means salvation. Correct. Right. So it's a combination of Yahushua's name is almost a combination. It is a combination of the Father's name. Because he gave birth to him. Right. With the name salvation attached to it or, or in it. Salvation in his name. Correct. Come on. You see that? Oh, oh, oh. He gave birth to Yahushua. Brother Andrew, he gave birth to Yahushua. Yahushua having the salvation in him because you got to come through salvation to get to the Father. Mm-hmm. You see, so you gotta correct. come. You gotta and come. What matters most to me. That's it. Co- correct. And what really matters most to me is this: it's all done on the authority of the Father. Correct. Oh, he's it the doesn't one change did. anything else. It doesn't change who saves us. We know that it is because the Messiah came as the Word of God, the will of God in the flesh. Mm-hmm. But He could not have done it if God didn't say go. And do this. Correct. He said he was sent. He was sent. He he he, he, he sent him. Sent. He came out of him. Mm-hmm. Right. He came out of him. That's right. If if I sent a bunch of money to a poor community to feed them, and all those people that I gave the money to fed that community, you know who they're going to thank? The person who sent the money. The said, That's right. Could those workers? Could those workers do it without the money? Could no. those workers do it without me deciding? On doing that? No. 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 Bless y'all. I'm, 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 Bless I am thank y'all for doing this. Bless him. And I thank y'all for his word doing this. Mm-hmm. And you know the word God? Mm-hmm. Jesus, you can't get you can't get the word. God can the word God can't give birth to Jesus. But the word Yah- Yahweh can give thank birth you. to Jesus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, correct. You, but you That's can't so give true. God can't give it's, it's it doesn't it doesn't make sense. That's a come I said that um, it's not even a name. It's, it's not, not even that because God is not a name; it's a title, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Jesus is. That's right. Did, did, did yeah. come from That's God? right. It's a yeah. title. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's all I wanted to highlight, brother. Brother Andrew was just to show that um, the ch- changing the name of our Messiah does more. Um, it's more than just a, a minor translation error, but it also changes the heavenly Father's name. And if it changes that name, then there is no name under heaven that we may be saved because the name got changed. There is no salvation. See, you see, it's back. they took it away anyway. That's why, if you go by what the church really teaches, you call you say God. Yes, and Jesus is Lord. But in, 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 if you look up Lord in, under Google, it says Baal. If you look the Lord, look the word Lord up in Google, it says Baal. That's the Lord. Uh, I've told people this before. Mm-hmm. You're talking about Hebrew authors. <laughs> Why in the world would they call their father Lord? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They know what the word meant. They yes, wouldn't they have did. done that. Yes, they did. That's true. Anybody else? Because I thought we're about to get into something I think everybody's going to enjoy. 
Well, mm-hmm. well, Brother Andrew, you know, I watched the story of Sabrina a while back, and they called the devil, the devil, my Are lord. You Sabrina, the teenage yeah, witch? teenage witch. Uh-huh. They called they called him Lord, Lord something, but they used the word Lord, sure. and um, they would. They also had the 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 Utah. What is that thing that one? The U, the Utah law. The Utah law. Like that. That's yeah. another thing that they used is a marker. As a part of their worship to this Lord God. Yeah, that's a log, right? Yeah, but it has other meanings. But it's too. dealing with a log of fire, and remember, that's like an altar, burnt offerings. Exactly. We're dealing with, yeah, dealing with their Lord. Uh, so all of this, so they connected the word Lord to Christmas. <laughs> that's what I'm saying in the story. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't want to hear truth. I, we, I don't know you all have seen the uh, TikTok recently, where Satan has said, "Christians, you need to thank us for Christmas. You need to thank us for yeah, Halloween. You, tell me, or you need to thank us for these holidays because they come from us." To see that, uh, that wow. Christmas Christmas they, they don't want to listen. Like a, I mean, the world has all the evidence out there. But we've heard some of the greatest calisthenics ever. I've had. A, I've heard a pastor say. There's nothing wrong with Christian, uh, Christmas. It's not sin. I mean, this dude is an adamant argument against the Hebrew thought. He's aggressive against it. Mm. To the point where he'll explain everything into the scripture somehow. So we learn quickly that you can, t- you can, <laughs> you can show the horse the water, but you, can, uh, you can't make him drink, right? You can lead him to it, True. but they won't drink unless they want to. It, it nevertheless, right. it nevertheless doesn't mean the truth is not there because you won't drink. The, the water still sitting there, whether you drink it or not. Mm-hmm. Yep. And your yep. water of chaos That's and confusion right. and lies is still there too. We choose, we choose not to drink from that anymore. I don't want to drink it until I can't drink no more. You can sit here and eat from that can, eat from that grade school tray. Go ahead and eat your cream corn. I'm going to eat my <laughs> prime rib. <laughs> Sister Monique, I think you have something to say. Oh, Sister Monique, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say uh, that, yes, you're um, correct. I had a, a person that I came across. She was, I want to say she was a, little, a Wiccan. Remember, and, she, and I was trying to uh, tell my friend about uh, Christmas. This was like maybe like two or three years ago. And I, I, I turned around to her and I said, can you please tell my friend that Christmas is pagan? And she was like, oh, yeah, of course. And she started just like, <laughs> basically, and my friend went here or she was just like, if I want to tell my or if I want to lie to my kid about Christmas or whatever, like, then that's my um, that's my thing. Um, like, I don't want anyone else to, like, to um, tell them that, you know, saying or whatever isn't real. Uh, I just left it at that. I was like, well, at least like she confirmed Even the my. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, at least my. <laughs> I was like, at least she proved my point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. Isn't it? That's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I um, heard a woman's testimony today where she said, "I'm dealing with my my family, and she was, you know, dancing, and, you know, um, with her little testimony." Because she's dealing with her mother, who's very upset she doesn't celebrate Christmas no more. To the point where her mother was crying. Mm-hmm. And she said, she said this, my mother over here crying to Tammuz. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't giving her mama no slack. But she's dealing with the fact that it's so serious by some people. That they will cry and really be hurt when you decide to practice the truth. To the mm-hmm. point where they will travel hundreds of miles to get away from you so they can celebrate the truth. Uh, I, I know that firsthand, by the way. Mm-hmm. So you're going to you're gonna face these issues. All right? Yes. They want to celebrate their version of the truth. And that's just how it is. And, and, you know, their version of the truth ain't nothing but a lie. We've already talked about that earlier, where where if there's anything in the presence of your eye, 
that's not just light. It, I don't give a care how much torn you got in you. If something else is in you, then you're all dark. Because what was it, Minister? You said that if, if you had a whole pot of perfume, I, I know I've read that before, but it's a, and just a little bit of poo, right? Just a little bit, a drop. The whole thing is ruined. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's how the truth is. Mix your truth with anything of darkness and you just ruin it. That's true. Um, there was a question that just came up. King Herod, mm -hmm. um, an Edomite, he was working on behalf of Rome. He was placed on the throne to, to, um, to rule by the Roman Empire. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The rule to be the head of Judah, the, uh, the, of the Hebrew, to be over that Hebrew region, the mm -hmm. region of the Hebrews. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the image that they brought in of, of Jesus represented them, not us. They knew who correct. He, correct. They knew who he was, but over the years they manipulated it, whitewashed the pictures, changed the textures of the hair, changed the name, burnt the scrolls, and came up with the King James Bible, inserting themselves you into know, it. Cos Cos Cos's team knew that he couldn't get his people to believe in anybody that didn't look like them. It just, it's just. Come on, people. That's just how it is. You're trying to create a universal religion. How are you going to get more of the people to buy in? And you're talking about a, a throwy haired black dude, dark skinned black dude. They, they, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't have done it. Because at that time, we were also in bondage as we are again now. So who would have wanted to, yeah. who would want to make a a person. I, uh, I give you an example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I give you more. I give you another example of how how religion how people change images. Mm -hmm. Do you know the first Buddha was was a Semitic figure from India that looked Semitic. They looked Af it looked African. The first oldest statues of Buddha looked African. They had the coarse curly hair texture. The, the black feet, full lips, you name it. Completely like a, um, a person from Africa. Go try to show an African Buddha to a Chinese person right now. Let's see how far you get. Mm. You, you won't get very far with it. Mm. No. You might get slapped and attacked and thrown stuff at you and everything else. They're not going to do that. Buddha has changed over the years to look like them. When the ancient Buddha, which is of a Semitic origin, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pagan Semitic, but over, from a Semitic origin, right. did not look anything like you see today. Nothing like you see today. So people do that. It's it's just how this is what they do. Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and so it's not that. unreasonable though that they did this to the Messiah because they never wrote it. I can understand if they wrote the scriptures. But they didn't even write it, so of course they're going to change what they look like. It'd be just like me trying to change the Greek mythology. Oh, wait a minute. They did that too when they stole the Egyptian gods. Okay. That's correct. If they stole just Jesus, do you think they just created the Jesus nonsense? No. Their whole pantheon was stolen before they mm -hmm. even got to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. It's what they do. What they do. All you got to do is your history. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. So let's move to the next verse. We're going to have some interesting. We've never done yet in one of our lessons. We never defined dogs, have we? So let's take a look into this. Um, Philippians three, verse two. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the consensual. In the scriptures, we see dogs, sheep, goats, and pigs used to reference people. But the church never teaches you what those animals represent. We know that sheep and goats are clean. They usually represent the Hebrew people. Pigs represented Rome, or those that were out, never had Torah. But the pigs in the New Testament is typically referenced. 
But here, Paul says, adults to pigs. Let's see who the dogs are really referencing so we can understand why um, he uses the word dogs here. So this is a great opportunity for us to learn what dogs really mean in the scriptures. We heard how Paul references it, but let's figure out where it comes from, all right, and who it's really referencing. All right, anybody have anything before we continue? No. No. All right. Minister Ronnie, I, I haven't even asked you to read. Okay. Do you mind reading? Who no. are the dogs referencing? All the way to the last bullet. Okay. Who are the dogs referencing? Uh, Mark chapter 7, 26 to 27. The woman was a Greek or, or Sephronician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Yahushua said unto her, Let the children be filled first, or first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. First important point, notice that the woman was Greek, but she was a Sipholician she was a Sipholician by nation by nation or kindred. This means that the term Greek is referring to a person's nationality and not their race. Okay, so not all Greeks were of Greece. Some were colonized. Why is this important? Just because someone is Greek or Roman doesn't mean they are not of another nation or race, i.e. a Hebrew. Let's examine the highlighted words on the next slide. Thank you. Thank you. That's, this is a very good verse. Mm -hmm. Two verses. So when anybody ever tells you that Greek meant white, go to this verse or Greek meant Roman, go to this verse. If he says to the Syrophoenician, right, Syrophoenician, right, mm -hmm. by nationality, by nation, by a people. But she was a Greek at the same time. So how are you, you going to be two different groups? Mm -hmm. Because she was a Hellenist, and we're going to talk about that. She was of the Greek colony, but she was Syrophoenician. He is a black male, but he's an American. He is a Chinese male, but he's an American. It's the same concept, right? You see that in all the European colonies. America got all these different groups in one country, mm -hmm. but they're all American. That's, that's what we're seeing here. Okay? okay. So let's, let's examine the highlighted words. How are we doing on time here? Okay, we're good. All right, let's move to the next slide. All right, so the word Greek is Hellenist. This is a Greek woman, so it's Hellenist, not not Hellenistic or Hellenese. It's a Greek by nationality. And in a wider sense, though, this is important. The name embraces all nations, not Hebrew that made the language, custom, and the learning of the Greeks their own. So whoever this woman is, she made everything that the Greeks were, she made it herself. So she acted, lived, ate, slept, breathed as a Greek. The same thing we do today in America. I can go anywhere in the world, they can look at me and say, you're an American. Same concept, I don't understand. We can't isolate the scriptures as if what happened then don't happen now. Mm. All right. The Hellenes are opposed to the Hebrews. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. That's important. The big difference in this woman is the what she worships. She worshiped as a Greek, which isolated her from the Hebrews. They knew what she was, by the way, she dressed, mm. acted, worshipped, ate, everything. Mm -hmm. She didn't dress like them. She didn't act like them. She didn't talk like them. She didn't eat like them. It was obvious, easy for someone to see that she was not a Hebrew by just her appearance, all right? And I'm going to prove this. Mm. All right, now... Remember, 
the Greeks were polytheistic. The Hebrews were monotheistic. So that's why it was so easy for them to point out people who were Hellenistic. So that's one of the more easy ways to notice a hell. All right, everybody follow? Yes, yes. All right. So let's let's look a little more. We're gonna dig a little more. Let's prove this. All right, who wants to read for me? Um, Minister White, can you read all this? Okay. Let's prove Hebrews did not associate with those who did not obey Torah. Those who mm-hmm. were poly, polytheistic, those who did not dress right, those who did not eat right. Come on. All of these things. I'm, I want you to see that they did not do that. And we've already talked about this today during our Shabbat. But let's talk about it in specific here. We did not associate with those who did not fall in line with Torah. Please read this. Okay, the true audience of the remainder of Paul's letters. No matter how you look at it, there is only one audience in Paul's letters. Mm-hmm. Philippians 3, 2. Who are the dogs referencing? Mm. We begin with Mark chapter 7, verses 26 through 27. Mm-hmm. Let's prove Hebrews did not associate with those who did not obey Torah. Mm-hmm. Genesis 17, verse 14. And the, and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Another witness is Exodus chapter 12, verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Yasharel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. The third witness is Exodus chapter 31, verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Mm-hmm. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Mm. Well, thank you, Minister. So these are just three examples, three laws, three different laws. If you break these, just one of these laws, you were cut off. They, they wouldn't have nothing to do with you. Mm. Getting kicked out. <laughs> Getting kicked out the kingdom. They don't play. And they continued with this belief to the day of the Messiah. It was not abandoned. You know that because the Pharisees and Sadducees were lettered by the letter of the law living people. They'll be the biggest hypocrites, but boy, if they don't see that you're, you didn't follow circumcision, you cut off. You're not practicing the Sabbath according to their standards, you cut off. So we know that this was being practiced even in the days of our Messiah. All right, just to prove that that's what a Helen was to um, the Messiah, to the disciples, and so on. All right. Yes. Are we good with that? Yes. Now, now let's let's go back because I want you to see what a servo Phoenicia really means. All right. The Greek word is servo Phoenicia or Phoenicia. Sorry. Look at it. It's a mixed nation, half Phoenician. Half Syrian. Mm. Now you need to look at the root. Look at the root. From Suros, the Greek word, an inhabitant of Syria. From Phoenicia, a region of Palestine. Hmm. What was the Palestine formerly called? What was that region formerly called? Mm. Okay. What was it formerly called? Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me move to the next slide to show you another verse that will support it, and then we're going to put it all together. Mm-hmm. What was Palestine formerly called? Can now, I... Matthew speaks of the same woman. Mm-hmm. All right? Same, this is the exact same woman. Matthew fifteen twenty two. But instead of calling her a Syro-Phoenician, 
he called her a Canaan, a Canaanite woman. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Adonai, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. The woman that was a Syrophoenician was a Syrian Canaanite woman. Canaan is the name of the land of Israel, the original name. This woman was a native to the region. Okay? This woman was called a dog. Why? Was she a non-Hebrew or a Hebrew? We, let's determine why she was called a dog by defining what a dog is. All right, from a Hebrew perspective, and we'll do that in a second. What I want you to understand also here, she knew who the Messiah was. Remember, she knew he was the son of David. How? If she was some straight up foreigner who had nothing to do or no connection or a Greek, like uh, Mark said, how would she know he was the son of David? She knew because she understood things, certain things. Right. And she knew these things, not by just word of mouth, right. but she had an understanding. Right. She had an understanding. And you would know that if you read, because she says, even the dogs feed off of the master's table. Mm -hmm. She didn't deny who she was. She did. So she understood what she was as a person. And for her to understand her place, she must know who she is. And what she is. Mm -hmm. She knew she was a dog. So we need to define what a dog does from a Hebrew perspective. And then we're going to put it all together. Anybody have anything they want to ask? No. And, and are they, um, uh, you, you all are following? I, I do. I want to ask one quick question. Um, in the previous slide, in the previous slide, it said she was a zero Phoenician. Is that is that correct? Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. mean that mm -hmm. it means that she is a uh, a blend of Syria and yeah. is that right? Syria and yeah, she was Syrian and Canaanite or Palestinian. Okay, so I'm going to let you finish to see if you're going to answer my question before I don't want to step on your. <laughs> Your lesson again, so I'll wait. Okay, let's see. I don't know if I was I would do, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All righty, let's see. Um, Sister Billy, dogs from the Hebrew perspective. You can read this all the way down, please. From Proverbs twenty six and eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. To understand what a dog does, we must first understand folly. Folly is the less H two hundred. Uh silliness, the folly, foolish weakness. And the root oh, foolishness. is foolishness. Oh, okay, foolishness. And then the root is evil. 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 Okay. H one ninety one. Um, that's where that comes from. And then it's perverse. One who despises wisdom. And the Paleo Hebrew. Clarifies and it's spelled completely different, um, which is uh, Lamed, Lamed, Lamed and, and Aleph. Aleph. Yeah, without to be without anything such as nothing mm. related to Lamed, Lamed and Hay. And hay. Mm -hmm. Apparently, an opposite of um, Aleph and Lamed. Aleph. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
To be opposite of Elohim is to turn away or return to what you were, vomit. Wow. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you, Sister Lynn. Uh, Billy, I'm sorry. Look at this. Folly is lost. And it's the opposite of Allah, which is Yah or or our or, or Heavenly Father. So a person who is in folly is opposite of a person who is in Yah. It is a person who has turned away from the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you all? Yes. You see what this really means? Yes. So well, to be opposite of Allah, to be opposite of Allah, is to turn away the opposite, which is La, okay. which is to return to his own vomit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why it's called evil. Evil. This is the word evil in Hebrew. In modern Hebrew. Isn't that something? Yeah, to turn yeah. away from Yah is evil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. To turn away from Yah is the opposite of him, right? Right. So to turn away from him is, is to go back to what you were. To turn away from him is to be without him. Mm -hmm. To turn away from him is to be outside of him. To turn away from him is to be outside of the pet or right. the three cord fold, right. the wall, mm -hmm. the camp. Mm -hmm. To be opposite of him is to be away from the light. To be opposite of him is to be in darkness. Mm -hmm. This is done by choice, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. this, this is done by choice. We understand? We follow? Yes. yes. Well, um, what I'm what I'm saying is that the shepherd, the shepherd staff there, the shepherd at this point is Satan because he says, I understand your father. Your father's a father of liars. And he tells her that they have a different shepherd. So this shepherd for this woman is is evil. That's that means that their worship right. is normally given to Satan. And he is their shepherd. Correct. The, the, the thing about Hebrew is that you have a negative and a positive understanding. Of each card. Because we know that this alphabet. is being used in a negative. Right. It's using, the, it's using it in a negative context. This is the teacher of false, of a false power. Exactly. Exactly. Of pagan. Exactly. That's what this is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Yes, ma'am. A teacher of a false power. All right, let's move to the next slide because we're running short on time and I don't want to press my luck with it. So, a dog is an animal that turns to his own, his or her own vomit, is foolish, perverse, and despises wisdom that's evil without having nothing or being outside, without the camp. A person who is opposed to or turned away from Al, our father. So, let's summarize now what we've been talking about. Now, the Syrophoenician woman was a Hellenistic Canaanite woman with mixed nationality, finished the fight. She was a native to the land of Yasserel, which is Canaan at the time. Yakusha called her a dog because she, her people turned away from Yah to live as the Greeks did mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. So much so that when he sent his disciples out, he said, don't go to these people. Mm -hmm. He said, don't go to them, because they were so deep into their way of the pagans that they were not reachable. The disciples couldn't reach them. Right. Now, when she was called a dog, she didn't deny it, but stated yes, confirming she knew she was a dog. She knew that she was the people. Her ancestors were the people who turned from Torah and chased after their own body. Yep. To know that you are a dog is to know your history. Correct. See? She knew she and her people turned away from Yah many years ago and mm -hmm. lived as the colonizers, <laughs> the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So a dog is a Hebrew 
who turned away from Torah to live according to the world. Mm-hmm. We understand? Yes, yes. So Paul would not have said this. Paul would not have said this unless he knew <laughs> that these people had a similar history. Beware of those who have turned away from the truth, Torah, or Yahuwah. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision or the self-mutilation. That's what that really is. Mm-hmm. And this is the last this is the last slide, by the way. And Peter supports our understanding in 2 Peter 2, 20-22. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of Adonai, Yahusha, and Masha, they are again entangled. They turn back. They're in and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it has been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness to be obedient to the divine Torah. That's what that means. Then after they have known to turn from the holy command to deliver unto them, but mm-hmm. it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, the dog is has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. A dog is a Hebrew who turned away from Yah. And Paul would not have used that. He knew that. And proof of that is in Genesis. Mm. Proof of that is in Genesis because mm. the um the the progenitor of the Syrian people is the father. Their father is Aram, who is um, the son of Shem. So the son of Shem is Aram, and Aram and his children are called the Syrians. So they are Shemites. They're not Hebrew Israelites, but they are Shemites. So they knew the way, mm-hmm. and they and they and they stepped away from it. A long time ago, but they once knew the way, which is how she was able to recognize him um, as a son of David. And that's the point I wanted that's to make. That's right. She came from two peoples. She did. She came from two peoples that knew the Hebrews. She, she came him. from the Hebrew people. She came mm-hmm. from the Syrians. They knew the people. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Anybody else? I know we're, we're, we're off on time now. So. Yes, okay. All right, if there's nothing else, we thank you all for joining the House of Shiva Ministries. I thank you once again. We've been, this is a great series. I hope you all are enjoying it. I hope you're learning the true audience of Paul's letters. Please join us again as we continue in the letter of the Philippians in part 17 next week. All right, shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.